number 30 oxides of nitrogen will form contribute to acid rain that will cause acidification of lakes and corrosion of buildings the nitrogen oxides will also react with the ground level ozone layer uh, ground level ozone to form smog uh, unpleasant gas that's found in uh, the mixture of gases at ground level but they do not contribute to the hole in the ozone layer in the atmosphere or in the stratosphere because that is done by the CFCs Thirty one, we have this equilibrium that's exothermic. What will happen when we carry it out at a higher pressure? When we have higher pressure, the the cost of the machineries and all that to maintain them will increase. And higher pressure, the equilibrium will shift to the side that has less gases molecules to relieve the pressure. So it will shift to the right. So the yield will also increase. The reaction will proceed at a faster rate because when higher pressure the gases are more concentrated so speed of reaction increases. So all three statements are correct. Thirty two Boltzmann distribution energy. What can we use to explain the rate of reaction? We can use it to explain how come increasing temperature will increase the rate of reaction at a higher temperature okay, we have let's say this is the activation energy we have a higher portion of particles that have more than the activation energy compared to the one that is at a lower temperature a catalyst without a catalyst this is the portion of particles that has the activation energy or more with a catalyst that lowers the activation energy we have a much larger portion so we can use Boltzmann distribution to explain why rate of reaction increases with temperature and addition of catalyst 33 in this urea molecule there's hydrogen attached directly to nitrogen so we can expect hydrogen bonding this is a polar molecule due to the electronegative um, atoms so there's also PDPD and don't forget that as long as they have electrons electron cloud they will by default have induced dipole induced dipole also so it also has induced dipole, induced dipole it's just that besides induced dipole it has hydrogen bonding that is significant and also permanent dipole so all three are actually correct 34 when we drop calcium into cold water we will form calcium hydroxide and barium hydroxide Part of the calcium hydroxide will not be soluble in the water. Part of it will dissolve, but part of it will not be soluble. So we will see a precipitate. Whereas for barium hydroxide, barium hydroxide, the solubility of hydroxides group 2 increases down the group. So it's actually soluble in cold water. So you will see a white PPT for calcium hydroxide, but not for barium hydroxide. The solution turns blue for both of them because of the hydroxides form. Okay, part of calcium hydroxide still dissolves. It will turn the solution alkaline. Uh, gas will be evolved for both of them. You will get hydrogen gas. Thirty-five. We have to check whether something is oxidized and reduced at the same time. The chlorine, 0 to minus 1, reduce 0 to plus 1, oxidize. And before that, we have to balance the equation. These are the missing substances that we have to fill in. ClO minus for the first one, Cl minus for the second one, 
NH2O for the third one. So the first one, there is a redu reduction and oxidation at the same time with this proportionation. Second one, it's oxidized and also reduce. The third one for nitrogen, oxidize and reduce. So all three are disproportionation reaction. Number 36, element X is a solid contaminant of carbon containing fuels. So it's referring to sulfur. Its oxide is formed in car engines and then can be further oxidized. So this is the um, the way sulfur becomes sulfur dioxide and then becomes sulfur trioxide. So X, Y, and Z. First statement: Molecule Y has lone pairs. This is sulfur dioxide. It has lone pairs, not just on sulfur but also on the oxygen atoms. So one is correct. Atmosphere oxidation of X to Y to Z is catalyzed. Sulfur dioxide is changed to sulfur trioxide. And uh, in a reaction with nitrogen oxide or nitrogen dioxide. So it is a catalyzed reaction. Nitrogen dioxide is formed again when the nitrogen oxide reacts with oxygen gas. So overall, it does seem that your nitrogen doesn't appear in the reaction, okay? although it does catalyze the reaction. Sulfur dioxide is a colorless gas, that's correct. So all three are correct. Thirty-seven. Which of the statements of cholesterol is correct? It's a secondary alcohol. This alcohol secondary. It contains two pi bonds, that's incorrect, it only contains one pi bond. All carbon atoms in the following lies on the same plane. These carbons are all tetrahedrally joined to each other, so they won't be able to form on a to be lie on the same plane. We have this molecule. How will it react to form a compound without a chiral carbon? So when we have potassium dichromate, your alcohol groups will become acidic groups your, for your primary alcohols at least. Your secondary alcohols will become ketone groups. So it will form this molecule. There's no chiral carbon for this molecule. Sodium boron hydride, there's a reducing agent. Right, it will not change any of the alcohols. Of this is actually not an alcohol, this is actually aldehyde. So the aldehyde will become an alcohol. The rest, secondary and the primary alcohol will not be, will not be changed. So your aldehyde becomes your primary alcohol here. And there's no chiral carbon. If you're wondering about this carbon, okay, it's joined to the same groups here and here. So no carbons are chiral. Tolens reagent will react with your aldehyde group. You get COO minus, and then your car real carbon will be here. You try to four different groups. So this one will have a chiral carbon. So one and two are the choices. Thirty-nine. An organic compound decolorizes bromine and reacts with sodium. So decolorizes bromine, it means it's unsaturated. At least it will have a double bond. So if we look at quickly at just the carbon and hydrogen, we can see that the third one, it is CnH2m plus two formula. So this one is saturated. It will not be able to decolorize bromine. For the other two. They are less than CnH2m plus 2, so we can expect them to be unsaturated. And we can check. Okay, for C3H6, I can actually we can actually draw them until there's an alcohol group for one of the O, and there's a double bond here. 
So this one will decolorize bromine and your OH will react with sodium. So this is possible. We have two oxygen. It could be two alcohol groups or it could be one acidic group. So we will do our try and error. We have three carbons. We put a double bond to try out. And then it seems that the two oxygen will form the acid group. So we have C3H4O2. This one will decolorize bromine and this one will react with your sodium. 40. We have halogen alkenes. They can be of CFCs or and all that. It will make it less flammable, the textile. It will be safer. You form hydrogen bonds. The hydrogen bonds, the halogen alkanes, the hydrogen is not directly joined to your fluorine or chlorine. It's joined to a carbon instead. So there will not be hydrogen bonds. If 2 is wrong, 3 will be wrong. The halogen alkanes undergo polymerization, stiffening the fabric. That will be wrong since we eliminated 2 already. So only option 1 is correct.